Hello and welcome to FRAP Talks, where we discuss anything related to modular synthesis with FRAP tools instruments. In this video, we will expand the concepts of VCA and inverters until we reach the territories of audio rate modulations. Let's get into that. Before we start, let's recap some core concepts of the previous videos. The first one is that amplifiers can be linear or exponential. We use exponential amplifiers mainly with audio and linear ones mainly with CV. We demonstrated exponential VCA with the CGM and linear ones with the 321 module. The second one is inversion, a sort of a negative amplification of a signal. If we invert an audio signal, its phase will rotate by 180 degrees. If we invert the CV, its positive values will become negative and vice versa. A circuit capable of attenuating a signal down to zero and then amplifying it again but inverted is often called attenuverter. Many modules feature an attenuverter straight after the CV input. This allows us to define the amount of modulation that we want to send to that specific parameter, but also its direction in relation to the knob. In this specific case, we can also say that the knob works as a sort of offset to the incoming CV input. We have also said that an amplifier or an attenuator can be voltage controlled, thus becoming a VCA, a voltage controlled amplifier. What we didn't say, however, is that also an attenuverter can be voltage controlled. A voltage controlled attenuverter uses a circuit called the four quadrant multiplier, just like the one that is featured on our Falistri. A four quadrant multiplier is a circuit that multiplies two signals and outputs the result. By multiplying two signals, the result is in fact a variation in amplitude of the signal that we perceive as faster. To better understand this concept, we can think about attenuverters in terms of multiplication as well. With an attenuverter, in fact, we are simply multiplying the signal patch to its input by the value set by the knob, let it be positive or negative. Let's demonstrate the behavior of a four quadrant multiplier by varying the amplitude of an LFO with an envelope. In this bench here, we are taking advantage of Falistri's four quadrant multiplier and its semi normalizations. We are using the green generator as a sawtooth shaped LFO and the yellow one as an envelope to control it through the four quadrant multiplier. At this moment, we don't need to patch anything to the inputs of our four quadrant multiplier, since they are semi normal to the yellow unipolar out and the green bipolar out, respectively. We then patch the output of the four quadrant multiplier to Brenso's wave folder CV input. The yellow envelope is unipolar, it means that the voltage range is positive only. In fact, we can see only two LEDs of the four quadrant multiplier flashing. They are the positive and negative side, respectively, of our LFO. An LED lights up according to the level that the wave is reaching at that time of its period. Now let's try to change the amplitude of the LFO, but also to invert it. And to do so, we need a second signal that can go to negative values. It can be the same envelope, just taken from its bipolar output. But for this specific patch, we'll make it cycle and behave like a second, slower LFO. Now, whenever the yellow LFO will go to negative values, the green one will progressively increase its amplitude but with inverted phase. We can also see that now all the four LEDs of the four quadrant multiplier are flashing. The two new ones represent the positive and negative side of the main LFO with inverted phase. Now a question may arise. What happens if we patch audio signal through this kind of circuit? Let's keep our modulating signal steady and replace our LFO with an audio source. What we perceive is a plain amplitude modulation. It seems to be more pronounced in the beginning and end of each LFO half cycle, and that is perfectly normal because the four quadrant multiplier is a linear VCA. However, what is really happening is that when our modulating LFO gets to its lower peak, the audio signal comes back in with inverted phase. This phase inversion is mirrored by the four LEDs of the four quadrant multiplier. The upper ones display the positive and negative sides of the waveform with its regular phase and the lower ones with its inverted phase. 
This difference is almost unnoticeable, but it becomes dramatically relevant when we use an audio source as a modulating signal as well. If we increase the frequency of our modulating LFO, we'll reach a point at which we can no longer perceive the tremolo effect nor the original sound. In the same way, we can no longer tell when the LEDs are on or off. They seem all lit up, but they are in fact flashing on and off at audio rate. A new sound with richer overtones comes in. It is the result of the so-called ring modulation, and the new overtones are called sidebands. These new overtones or sidebands are the exact sum and difference of the two signals that we had in the beginning, which we'll now call carrier and modulator. The original pitch, however, is missing. If the frequencies of the carrier and modulator are in harmonic relation, like if they are the same frequency or one is twice, three or four times the frequency of the other, the result will be an harmonic sound. If their relationship is inharmonic, the result of ring modulation will be similar to a metallic and bell-like sound. Ring modulation is an excellent technique to obtain interesting timbers out of rather simple raw material, but for melodic purpose it may become quite limited, since the pitch of our carrier oscillator is no longer audible. The solution might be the so-called amplitude modulation. To perform amplitude modulation, we need a unipolar modulator signal. Remember, like the envelope we used earlier in this video that lit up just two of the four quadrant multipliers LEDs. Now, instead of an envelope or an LFO, we will just use a unipolar audio source. Now, Falistri has separate outputs for unipolar or bipolar signals and lets you have a unipolar audio source straight out of the box. Amplitude modulation is also called unbalanced modulation because one of the two signals is positive only and in fact we can see that only two of the four LEDs of the four quadrant multiplier are lit now. In the same way, the ring modulation that we saw earlier is also called balanced amplitude modulation. The effect of amplitude modulation is quite similar to the ring modulation. We no longer perceive the two signals but just the result of the modulation. The difference, however, is that now the frequency of the carrier signal is still quite clear. Even with inharmonic sound, the melody we play is still recognizable, also because in amplitude modulation the sideband's amplitude is lower than ring modulation. The Brinso oscillator also has a four-quadrant multiplier that we can hear through the final output. Its first input is the timber section output, while its second input is a semi-normal to the green oscillator sine wave output. By rotating this crossfader here, we define the balance between the timber modulation section and its amplitude modulated copy. By moving this slider, we choose to work with two or four quadrants, performing either amplitude modulation, unbalanced, or ring modulation, balanced. In this video we have seen how amplifiers and inverters can go beyond the classic signal processing such as defining amplitudes or inverting signals. When we use amplifiers and four quadrant multipliers at audio rate, they become an actual sound shaping tool, allowing us to generate new timbers and overtones. If you found this video useful or if you're interested in these modular synthesis topics, please consider subscribing to our channel and staying in touch with us.